Hey YouTube, I've got a video coaching review for you today. This one is from Ben. He's a barebow shooter and is looking for help on a few different things, including cleaning up his release and follow through. If you're unfamiliar with what video coaching review is, essentially I sit down here in front of my computer and review anything that anybody sends to me in relation to archery. That could be form, equipment, technique, uh, mental process, or dietary things, training plans, things like that. Essentially, I just review anything that anybody sends me and give them as best of feedback as I possibly can. If you're interested in your own video coaching review, I will have links in the description below to my website, jcominci.com, in case you're interested. And again, huge thanks to Ben for allowing me to use this content on my channel. Let's get to his video coaching review. Hey there, Ben. Thanks for submitting a video coaching review. Much appreciated. And thanks for letting me use this as content on my channel. Many people struggle with the same issues that you are, and this can help others. So thanks for that. Also, I did send you or will be sending you along with this a uh, video release form. So once you sign that, I'll be able to use it on my channel. Anyway, so quick uh, background for those that are viewing on YouTube once this is live is that Ben gave me a little bit of a background as a, mm, a video submission as far as a uh, blog or vlog here talking about what he struggles with and things like that. Uh, shot recurve in the 90s, re, uh, retired for 25 years, and is now getting back into barebow, although there are some challenges because of not having a clicker. So, um, Ben, you said a couple of things. You had a couple questions. You mentioned you struggle with creeping and uh, some other issues including snap shooting and other target panic related symptoms due to not having a clicker. So this is super normal. Uh, you already discussed that I use a grips here and you haven't found a method that really works for you. Uh, and I don't really have too much of a recommendation there in, in regards to that because there are so many different ways to do it. I do think though um, that if you can't afford it and you're willing to, you should check out some of Joel Turner, the Shot IQ, his stuff that he's got going on. Uh, because as far as I'm concerned, he has the best explanation that I've ever seen in regards to target panic, the science behind it, and how to overcome it. And I really, really appreciate the work that he's done. Uh, and I use it because I find it to be helpful. Every other method I don't find helpful. I don't find blank bell helpful or anything in regards to dealing with target panic with barebow. Um, just like you said, it's just not interesting to you. So there's some things that I'm definitely going to suggest to you over, you know, the, some, some, some things that you can experiment with and hopefully it'll help. Um, so blank bail, if you can shoot well at blank bail, that's cool, right? But if you're dealing with snap shooting in a tournament specifically, then there's something that you need at least to work on and that's developing a shot process. Something that you must stick to as far as having a perception in your head of what is going to happen, how the shot should go, and how you need to execute your shot. Having markers that you always hit every single time, such as solid anchor, coming to full draw, aligning string alignment, acquiring the target, and some expansion to make the shot happen. So those things, if you can have like a checklist in your head of things that you want to go through before you're even giving yourself permission to let go of the string. I think that can help deal with some of that uh, snap shooting issues that you got going on. Um, because unless you have the concept of I have to do these things first in order for this to happen, you'll never let go then uh, prior to that if you have self-control. Uh, it, it can be difficult, but you can develop it. And it's just something that you have to practice over time. You said you're semi-retired, you have lots of time, you could shoot well over 100 arrows every single day if you wanted to, and if you can, you should, uh, but try to do it with a lot of deliberate intention. Don't just go shoot. Try to control every single shot. Try to control a lot of things, or at least a few key things that you can identify that is required for a successful shot to happen. So for example, for me, it is, Coming to full draw, of course, a good solid anchor, those together are one thing to me and, and very important. Then it is uh, obviously um, acquiring the target, getting the sight picture I want, getting the string alignment I want, things like that. But potentially before that, I may want to make sure that I'm fully bracing the bow, as in I'm adding a little bit of tension or I feel like I am rock solid 
and the bow's not winning, and therefore I'm not creeping. I don't know if I would recommend doing that before aiming and all of that because of the anticipation of if you build the tension first and then your sight picture is not right and then all you need to do is put the arrow in the middle, you'll do a drive-by. I'm guilty of that especially. So um, something that I like to do personally, and I, I created a video not that long ago about most archers aim too much. I believe that's the title of the video. I will include a link in uh, my reply to you with this video so that way you can reference it in case you haven't seen it yet. But quickly in a nutshell, I'll just explain it to you. And you can take something as simple as a piece of a pencil or your arrow if you're at the archery range, put it in the hand that you hold your bow in. And this comes courtesy of Joel Turner, part of the Shot IQ. So I'm not claiming to have this or, or have created this. But if you were my target, and if I were to just look at you and reach out at arm's length and just watch my uh, pencil here move and notice the pattern that it's making. Obviously when I'm talking and breathing, it moves a lot. But if I pause and hold still, but not try to intentionally hold the pencil still and just look at you, I can see a pattern of movement. And I think you can too, you can see me moving. Right now, you can do the same thing. Look at your target, do that same thing, but don't hold the pencil still. Now, I'm gonna look at you and hold this pencil as still as I possibly can. And for me, it gets worse. It moves faster, it's more erratic, and it's, it doesn't get any better, so why should I even try to aim? Why should I try to hold still? So if you can release some tension of the ideal sight picture and just do nothing but more, <clears throat> do nothing more than just looking at your target and letting your arrow float in your peripheral and not being too precise, that'll help uh, relieve some of the anxiety that can come in from, uh, especially in a tournament, in regards to snap shooting. But again, you have to have a shot process. You have to get to full draw. You have to brace the bow. You have to be still. You have to clear your mind, and then you have to focus on the task at hand, which is finishing the shot with control, a good follow through. And so it would be of benefit, in my opinion, to find a couple of things, no more than three things, that you need to focus on and do every single shot. So I don't know what that will be, but possibly come to full draw, brace the bow, and find a good finished position, find a good release and follow through position. Not release, but follow through. Ignore the release and just make follow through happen because if you follow through correctly, your release will be good. So that would be my guess, and my, or at least my suggestion, my guide to help at least start you on the right path to a good shot process. Because if you don't have a solid shot process, you'll allow this target panic to creep in and control you and uh, it'll have some deep hold, so it'll be tough to get rid of without a psycho trigger, and that's why I use the grips here. So uh, I'll take a look at your form technique here. Um, you said you're using my anchor, and you know you didn't really say too much else that you were struggling with other than potentially some creeping and snap shooting. <clears throat> Definitely can give you a few suggestions. Oh, and you also asked uh, if stitching them together like this in iMovie is helpful. It absolutely is. Then I don't have to jump around from clip to clip to, to change different views and things like that. So thanks for that. <clears throat> so first I want to watch a few shots and then we'll talk about some things that you can work on. <clears throat> Excuse me. Okay, so in my opinion, the number number one contributing factor to you snap shooting is that right there. You spend, in my opinion, far too much time in this position and are giving far too much attention to what appears to be essentially sight picture at this time frame. Most people will go into this position and pause here because they are, you know, preliminarily aligning the shot. But in my opinion, doing this truly distracts you from the task at hand, which is getting the bow back to full draw, getting to a repeatable position, and then executing a shot all while aiming. Those two last things happening roughly at the same time. If you pre-aim like this at all, 
I find that you give, not just you, everybody, gives too much attention to positioning and then they're far too careful as they're pulling back and then as soon as they get back to full draw, they'll snap shoot because the, the point is basically right there. You know, the, the arrow, the aiming reference point. So instead, what I do, if you watch any of my bare bow shooting videos, I have no pause here. I lift the bow while looking at the target and immediately start drawing the bow back. I have no idea where my sight pin on my recurve or my arrow are related to the target until I basically get to anchor. Once I get to anchor with bare bow, my arrow is always low because I'm just not used to lifting the draw or the bow arm up high enough to get that arrow on the target because I used to shoot recurve for so many, you know, arrows, hundreds and hundreds of thousands of arrows, probably a million shots at least prior to picking up a bare bow. <clears throat> so I have a habit of you know the feel of the shot where my my bow arm's slightly low compared to the target because of the you know recurve sight pin so high um so i have no idea where my sight is i have no idea where my arrow is and it's just not important to me because it doesn't matter i'm not at full draw i'm not aiming i shouldn't be aiming and i shouldn't be precise at all but what i should be doing is doing what i need to do with my body to get into a to get into a repeatable position to have repeatable tension and also to have repeatable thoughts. But if I am presetting for a very long period of time, I'm spending far too much energy, far too much effort worrying about being precise already, which is way too early in the shot, and it will do nothing but raise um, anxiety throughout the shot as far as when you're drawing the bow back. So this, this overall, and even here, I can tell you're being very controlled and very careful with the bow arm. Many people argue with me and say, no, that's not the case. And if that isn't the case, then don't spend any time at all pausing so much. Just get the bow back. Get the bow back to full draw, get comfortable, get settled, then aim, and then make the shot happen. Because if, if you're not doing it that way and you're spending you know, a lot of time previously as you are right now, you're just burning excess energy then. If you're not actually trying to be precise, why spend so much time? Why spend so much priceless energy that you could be spending a lot more wisely? And it's not just necessarily physical energy as far as actual musculature energy, but also mental energy, visual acuity, all of those things because as we're out there for hours shooting hundreds of arrows, we fatigue and having more tank or more fuel in the tank at the end of the day is way more valuable, especially in a tournament but I think it will really help with your shot anticipation if you don't spend so much time in this pre-shot uh, like time frame. You can even see it here on the first shot that you made. You got some chickens as well. It's awesome. <clears throat> so again, lots of pause, lots of attention, lots of attention, and then now you're ready to go. So instead, just get back to full draw, get settled, and then be precise. Even still, I wouldn't even be precise. I would just be precise with your body position, be precise with your feeling, be precise with your thoughts and your process, but not at all with your aiming. Again, most archers aim too much. Now, outside of that, um, this, this release that you've got going on, the very static release, in my opinion, is not ideal. You can see upon release, you have some good movement going on. Actually, you have quite good movement initially, on both sides, both the draw side and the bow side, and I can see good tension in direction on both sides, but then you stop it, and then the recoil happens and it starts to affect the bow arm, and then you essentially have a collapse. Um, so this is something that I would encourage you to potentially eliminate or experiment with. You know, you discussed having issues with creeping and uh, those kind of things, and so instead of um, anticipating the shot and ending the tension of the pull that you've got by releasing and staying still. Let that tension continue going on and in, if anything, in my opinion, it's, it's better to also increase gradually and slightly, like percentage points, not necessarily tens or twenties of percentage as far as don't go mm, it's just Mm, it's very gentle and gradual as far as the intensity or the amount of tension that you increase into the shot. And I think if you allow that to happen, where you allow the movement to happen of this follow through to move and keep going until you can no longer move anymore instead of ending the tension and staying still, 
you'll allow yourself to keep the flow happening, which will stop creeping and stop collapsing and stop plucking, as opposed to most people in my experience that have these static releases, they'll be pretty good, such as yours, like I said, good movement, and then that stop happens, and then you can see the whole recoil happen. But then as the pressure mounts, they start doing this relaxing before the fingers open up. And then it's a massive collapse, a massive pluck, and a disastrous result on the target. Now, as far as the recoiling, which I was talking about, you'll see it, this shot here. I wanna see how the shot goes at first. A Little bit of a, a collapse there, because you can see the elbow moving towards uh, your American flag here in the background of the flagpole. So you're at full draw, going forward in time, see the elbow move towards the flag, and then the string is gone, then the elbow move back, moves back, and then look at that bow. So watch, upon release, watch the bow jump out towards the target, towards the target, slightly down, which is totally normal and absolutely good. And then you stop moving the draw arm and watch the bow. Now it is pushing and recoiling towards the right, towards the flagpole, because that's showing me that you're relaxing and stopping and, and essentially collapsing. The collapsing, uh, the plucking, whatever you wanna call it, is not happening uh, super early in the shot. You have a decent movement and then you stop and catch it. And I think it's gonna cause some problems and some potential anticipation of where that time frame of when the relaxation or the cessation of that tension increase happens is going to creep closer and closer to the moment of release and eventually on a few shots, it's gonna happen before release and again, disastrous results. So just let that happen. Let it flow, let it move. Don't be rigid. Just keep the tension going, both back and around on the draw side and forward on the draw side until, in my opinion, the arrow were to reach between 18 and 30 meters. Somewhere in that, t that time frame that the arrow would take to get to that distance, keep having the intention of increasing the tension and just letting it, excuse me, letting it move and letting that happen till the arrow reaches about that far and it'll really um, enhance your shooting skill in my opinion. Now, um, if you do submit more video coaching reviews as you plan on, a uh, little bit further back on the camera would be very helpful, especially if you can. Um, try to level it according to the horizon because I can't tell some of these angles what's going on. Due to my eye, I can tell that you're leaning back a little bit here, um, but I'm not sure how much back and I'm not sure overall body position, so I can't really give you too much as far as guidance on how to fix this correctly uh, or if any changes even need to happen. So a little bit further back sometimes is helpful. Even getting your whole body in frame uh, every so often just to get one good shot so I can see how you're aligned and everything, your stances and things like that. It'll be helpful in the future. Um, and it, it just makes things a little bit easier for me. Um, I think that if it was me, um, I would be working on trying to bring this shoulder uh, and elbow around further and behind you, which will increase your draw length and make your alignment much better. It'll help with holding the bow back and being a lot more stable. Although you do a good job in this uh, this shot here to not creep. I don't see much creep going on, but you can see the bow jumping out and then watch after the bow hits full extension, it will violently move away from the camera towards the right. And that's that ending of the tension. And I would hate for that to happen prior to release. And uh, maybe some of this, the bow movement is coming from you wanting to see the arrow flight or wanting to see where the arrow lands because you're saying, uh, where did it go? Moving the bow out of the way, don't peek. Um, really try to make sure you finish your shot, analyze how the shot felt, and then look for visual reference of where the arrow went on the target. You'll be able to, to really strongly link a feeling of how a shot went and a result on the target to the point of where the moment you release it, you'll know where that arrow's going within a circle of about this big at 50 meters. And what it'll allow you to do is be able to be a better self coach to recognize what's going on, to make changes on the fly in the middle of tournaments and practice sessions and whatnot. 
and you'll get better faster. Plus, you'll have the advantage of shooting shots, shooting shots, shooting shots, everything's going well, all of a sudden you shoot a six high right, but the shot felt well, and you're like, I have no idea what happened, what do I do? Well, if you have enough, have you have shot enough to shoot the shot, analyze how it felt, and then check where the arrow goes, for me, anything high right, like a high right seven, high right six, or something like that, is indicative of a massive pluck, max, massive collapse. And uh, had I not recognized what I was doing to cause that result, and instead I see the result, but the shot feels okay, I can then say, all right, typically when the arrow goes that direction, these are the faults, the mistakes that I'm making, and this next shot I'm gonna make sure I don't do that. I'm gonna make sure that I make that next one even stronger in that regard to prevent that movement from happening. Um, so that would give you a big advantage there in my opinion. So um, I think with that being said, those are some, some pretty good things for you to start with. Don't be pre too precise in the pre-setup. Just get the bow back, get into body position, get the feel down, but don't be precise with aiming and don't be precise with positioning either. Even if you're not actually aiming, I think it's turning on parts in your brain that will lead to aiming too early, being too careful too early, and allow you to snap shoot. Develop a good strong routine, a good strong shot process that you can fall back on when the pressure mounts, so that way the pressure doesn't distract you from the task at hand, which is shooting good shots, and I think you'll have much better results that way. Continue letting the follow through happen. Don't be so rigid. Let both sides follow through. Gradually build tension until the arrow reaches between 18 and 30 meters and keep your eyes focused on the target and finish the shot, analyze the shot first, and then look for a result at the target. So that's kind of where I'd start. And if you can, uh, check out Joel Turner's Shot IQ. I believe he has a book. He has an online uh, program as well, but it's all about psycho triggers. And if you're not interested in using psycho triggers like a grip sear, a tab sear, a mouth sear, or any of those type of things, his book is probably sufficient, at least to help you wrap your brain around what's going on, and then it'll allow you to uh, formulate a process that's much more solidly built, so that way you have a lot less issues in the future. So hopefully this helps. Thanks again for submitting a video, Crow Trigger View, and I look forward to working with you in the future. Thanks.